This conference will now be recorded. Hi everyone, welcome to AWS Data Engineer Training Program. And today's topic is Code Deploy. As the name indicates that this service is used for deployment of the code. And this is part of CICD where we talk about continuous integration and continuous deployment. So in other words, you can say that this is part of CD part, continuous deployment part. So we'll be starting the class with the agenda and we'll do all these things practically. So overview of code deploy, create a Lambda function alias, create Lambda function version, create a code deploy application, create a deployment group, create a deployment, app spec configuration deploy lambda function code and deployment status so there are many things you don't need to remember all this stuff we'll be doing all these things practically and then you will come across all this terminology like what do we mean by function alias what is version what is application what is deployment group what is app spec configuration in yesterday's class when we were talking about code build project we talked about one file that was build spec today we have app spec configuration so we'll be exploring this in more detail okay so let's start with the overview so aws code deploy automates application deployments to ec2 instance aws fargate and aws lambda the code can be anywhere lambda is you can say one of the easiest way of executing your code because you don't have to worry about uh, setting up the server and all you have a python code and you want to run it so lambda is the best way if your code is small and your execution time is uh, less than 15 minutes then you can go with lambda but it's not always possible that execution time is less than 15 minutes right execution time depends upon your data depends upon your uh, you can say processing logic as well so if you have huge amount of data and if your processing is also complex your processing time may go beyond 15 minutes it may go for a few hours in that case lambda is not uh, you can say cannot help you you have to go with ec2 or you have to go with fargate fargate we haven't talked about in our training program but fargate is a containerized service of aws so if you have heard about containers like docker image or kubernetes right if you have a docker image available and you want to run that docker image on aws so fargate is the service okay so code deploy fully automates your application deployments eliminating the manual operation you don't have to do anything manually initially you have to tell like which lambda function you want to deploy and which version you want to deploy because you can create multiple version and accordingly we will be deploying that so code deploy protects your application from downtime during deployments through rolling updates and code deploy tracks and store the recent history of your deployment because you may make the code changes multiple times so you want to keep a track of that like on which date you deployed which version of the code so that completely managed by code deploy at the same time it will make sure that your application is migrated smoothly that means your users are running the lambda function so they were running the older code slowly they will be migrating to the newer code and in between there is no downtime that means when it's migrating it, the users will still be able to use the older older version of the code and once your deployment is successful once your deployment is 100 percent completed then your users or you can say whoever is calling your lambda they will start executing the up-to-date code so ultimately the conclusion is you have some code and you want to make some changes over there and you want to deploy the newer code so code deploy will help you on that So 
will be moving to the next slide and you can see here create a lambda function version and create a lambda function alias so let's do it practically i will open my console let me refresh maybe we have to log in again yeah so we'll be logging in so earlier when we created a lambda function we were logged in with the root user but now i'm logged in with iam user so most probably will not find the lambda function available so i will check it out let me duplicate this Okay, first of all, there is no permission for Lambda. IAM user nearest is not authorized to perform Lambda get account setting. Okay, no worries. We'll add the permissions for Lambda. So, from very first class, we are talking that permissions should be granted only on need basis. That means you should not allow everything for everyone. As in when they need something. Yesterday, we were trying code build and it was failing. So, I added the permission for code build. Today it's failing for lambda, so I will add the permission for lambda. And even for lambda, I mean for learning purpose, we are giving full access. Like code build full access, code pipeline full access, lambda full access. Even that's not mandatory. It depends upon the requirement. If someone who don't do not want to edit the lambda code, only they want to run it. So there are different policies available for lambda and you can grant the appropriate policy. In our case, because we are doing everything, we have to create the lambda, we have to update the code, we have to execute it. So usually we are giving like full permission. But when you are working in a project and if you have to grant access to some users, then be careful and do not go with full access all the times. Okay. So just like we did yesterday, I will be doing it. I will open one more tab. Okay. And AWS console. And we'll be logging in with root user. Zoom two zero two three. Next. Seven eight one two nine five. So we'll be going to IAM. Is that displayed? No. Okay, no worries. IAM users. So this user and then add permission. Add this one attach policy directly search for lambda aws code build role for lambda aws lambda full access aws lambda read only access aws lambda basic execution role let's go with this Okay, and next. So just like we enabled our root user for MFA, right? Because root user is more important because billings and uh, all these things are managed by your root user. But if you want to enable MFA for the IAM user as well, just like I'm entering username, password, and then a MFA code from my authenticator app. If you want to enable it for this particular user, you can even do that. Okay. So I'm coming back to my IAM user login. This one. Let me refresh the page. Okay. 
so you can see that my first lambda function code is available because earlier we did not have access now because we have granted access so we can see that my first lambda function 18 days ago and there should be some code over there yes there is some code is there so we are reading something from environment variable db url and we are displaying that and we are calling a function also okay so let's try to run it just for a i mean we ran it earlier but i want to just check it should be in running state test event we have to create because that day the test event we created right that was only for that it was private you can see that because that was created by root user so that test event is not available for this IAM user. That's why we need to create the test event. But lambda code is available. So we'll click on save. <coughs> click on test. Mm, yeah, it's working fine. Hello, my first lambda function is running. And this value is coming from environment variable. And this one we are calling some function. Uh, yes get result we are calling some number and we are passing something okay okay so this is my code and before we deploy something let me create a version because lambda has a concept of versioning and aliases you can see here version and alias so i will go to version and will give some name okay so publish new version whatever is your current code right give some name i would say v1 okay and publish and you can create alias also 